Hello and welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Courtney Kalfi. So Courtney, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm glad to be here. My name is Courtney Kalfi, and I am the Senior Director for Partner Services Global at Florida Virtual School. Uh, Florida Virtual School, as you may know, has been serving students in the online environment for over 22 years. Um, in both uh, the, in the Florida schools as well as through the global division, which I serve um, with helping with schools and districts outside of Florida. So I've been a lifelong educator. I started in brick and mortar classrooms as a social studies teacher. Uh, I was a national board certified teacher. And then I moved to Florida Virtual School to combine my love for choice educational options for kids, um, as well as uh, my passion for emerging technologies. So I've been here for uh, the past 13, 14 years, and um, I've worked in many different departments here, including the instruction department. Um, I've also done some curriculum development over here. And as I mentioned, I now serve, um, as I have for the past uh, several years, where I oversee the sales and operations uh, uh, with our partner schools who use FLVS curriculum, um, as well as our instructional solutions to help schools all over the US, uh, as well as internationally. Okay. Now, this particular school year, we've sort of had a major disruption that's happened. So the closing down of this school year and how we start up the next school year is probably going to be a little bit different than what we traditionally do. What advice would you give to school leaders on things they can be thinking about and planning for now to help facilitate that process? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the biggest pay takeaway that I have is to really have school leaders focus on making sure that they have grace and compassion. Um, you know, right now it is a, a strange time, um, not just for education and, and families, but for everyone. And so really just reassuring families um, that everything is going to be okay. Uh, school leaders and, and teachers everywhere are trying to do their best. And so really that care that administrators are gonna show their families you know, before the pandemic, but it is more important even now. Um, and so I think this is the greatest thing you can do because you already have those connections with your communities. Um, trying to figure out how to help, uh, sending out a help document with screenshots, how to turn in work, um, what to uh, expect from uh, this emergency learning that, that we've, uh, we've been sort of turned to. Uh, thinking about ways to celebrate, um, how to celebrate and send out celebrations for atypical things, and then really helping their staff with different responsibilities. So, you know, instead of bus duty, um, have your staff members call and check on your families, um, see uh, to make sure that their learning will continue, um, and really the grace and compassion and showing that, you know, there may be some delays um, with the learning that has been happening during this, this pandemic, but um, that, that we are here as school leaders to help uh, facilitate learning in, in any way. And that compassion is really going to be the way to, to connect the two and to make sure that there's still that, that community connection with the families and with the school. And then really, I would say to have a solid plan for next year. How are you going to start the year to, to focus on what students have learned, and also to address the gaps that may have existed because of the differences that students have had between their experience while being at home and living in this emergency situation. Um, I would focus on um, what types of remediation are you going to have in place? And then really, if possible, use the summer to fill those gaps um, to help try to remediate um, in, in an online environment if possible. Um, Florida Virtual School offers year-round schooling, and so we're seeing that in our, our Florida school um, to, to be able to help uh, bridge the gap that way um, with online learning. And then finally, um, just making sure that your, your staff's prepared. Um, we've set up an online community with Florida Virtual School that's free and open for school leaders or parents that are looking for some help. Um, you know, what can we do in this time and what support can we provide um, having done of uh, remote learning for, for the past 22 years. So um, I would suggest just sort of having a solid plan and really focusing on the grace and compassion. Okay. Now, thinking ahead past the immediate beginning of the next school year, um, the nature of pandemics are they come in waves. So there's a chance that a second or third wave may come through and cause disruptions in the, the system. Um, as more and more states are opening up, there's the greater increase that we might have local flare ups and individual school districts may uh, have to shut down. What sort of things can school leaders be doing now to help 
make that transition the next time around a little less abrupt than what it was this time, uh, a little more seamless, if you will. Yeah, I think, you know, that's, that's one of the, the, the great things out of this pandemic, if you can say anything's great, is that it really does focus and, and, and makes us think about what is plan B. Um, there always should be a plan B. And, um, you know, this isn't, whether it's the second wave of pandemic, as you mentioned, or flare-ups, um, or if it's even just, uh, you know, a snow day, a hurricane day, which we've experienced in Florida, there's always going to be a need for flexible and creative solutions to make sure that students are continuing their learning. That's our job as educators is to make sure that that does continue regardless of what circumstances happen outside of, of what we can control with our environment. So, you know, right now, I think it's a great opportunity to revisit that plan. What is not just the emergency plan, but what is the plan B? So that there are more choices for students, um, whether it's a, a forced or, or sort of a voluntary thing. Um, I, I would say, you know, looking at um, mastery based learning, that's something that Florida Virtual School has always done. You know, we, we don't necessarily just want the student to sit and learn. We want to make sure that they've mastered the standards. And so I think it's a really good opportunity for administrators to start to start thinking about mastery-based learning and, um, and giving it some, some real thought into how they can ensure that that happens before moving on. Because if there is an interruption to schooling, like you mentioned before, we'll need to make sure that students have mastered the concepts and aren't just being pushed along and have a greater problem down the road that way. Um, so flexibility is the answer. Um, you know, in, in looking at this type of solution and learning um, is really the key. And then I would also say that they have a great opportunity to prepare their teachers, whereas this pandemic nobody was prepared for and, and nobody saw coming. This is a great opportunity for administrators to take a step back and say, well, this could happen again in, in some instance. How can we learned for instructors that are in a remote environment. And then really just educating your staff and your family and communities that, you know, while teachers are doing everywhere, this remote crisis learning isn't necessarily the same thing as what we know as digital learning can be. So putting together that solid plan B um, and, and vetting curriculum now so that you have a solid plan in place would be my, my suggestion to them. Okay. Just to let you know, we, we had a lag there of about 10 seconds, so we lost a little bit in the middle, but I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what the bit was. So just to <laughs> let our viewers know and to let you know as well in terms of the recording. Um, so thank you for that, Courtney. Um, so this has been another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with has been Courtney Kelfi. Thank you for having me. And I guess that just goes to show you uh, some of the challenges with working from a remote environment. <laughs> Very much so, yes.